Okay, it's on. So what is your name and position? So my name is Jordan Draper and I am a compliance and Title IX investigator at Rutgers. What is your, why is your position important and necessary at the university? Um, so my position is actually new to the university as an investigator um, as of October and that's with all the new legislation um, and bills out kind of regarding sexual assault and sexual violence on campus. So a lot of universities are now creating positions, investigator positions um, that are separate from a Title IX coordinator because traditionally a Title IX coordinator makes the decision and they want somebody that has a non-biased perspective um, to to initially meet with the students and figure out kind of what's going on beforehand. Cool. What federal policies most pertain to your work? So the biggest thing is Title IX just because that affects compliance in general, um, especially around gender equality and sexual violence, which is um, specifically what I do in my current position here. Um, outside of Title IX, the Campus Save Act, um, the Not Alone Report, Cleary, um, there's going to be a new Campus Accountability and Safety Act that's coming out um, soon as well. So that's, that's a bill that's potentially being looked at being released. But those are some of the major components, the VAWA amendments as well. Great. Can you briefly describe the Cleary Act and what that means for campus crime reporting? Sure. So Cleary was started, I believe it was in the 1980s. A uh, Lehigh student was raped, sodomized, and murdered in her residence hall room, and her parents essentially found out that there had been a lot of issues of um, incidents reported for doors opening and crime actually happening at Lehigh, but the university did not report it to the students. So um, her parents basically worked with the government to come up with a piece of legislation which now requires all universities to report any crimes that occur on campus. So within my specific job that is um, sexual assault, and or sexual violence, um, domestic violence and dating violence, stalking and sexual um, and harassment, and then also things like murder, drugs, alcohol, all of that's reported as well. Cool. What exactly is the Campus Save Act and how is it implemented at institutions of higher education? Um, so the Campus Save Act is one piece of legislation that has come out within the government recently. Essentially, Campus Save Act is looking at education for students. So it's requiring that July, as of July this year, this upcoming year, universities are required to do training or have training available for all first, first year students and incoming students to the university. So that means first year uh, freshmen, first year graduate students, and all transfer students. Uh, another piece of Campus Save Act is just requiring that um, there's a fair and equitable process. So what that means is essentially um, the victim or the survivor and the accused student should have the exact same process in terms of what happens um, in the investigation, what their rights are during that process. So do they are they allowed to have an advisor? Are they allowed to have a support person? Um, their recommendations of sanctions as well as the appeal process. Um, Campus Save also essentially it's it works with Title IX and it works with the VAWA amendments to ensure that specifically higher, edu higher education institutions are following a multitude of different guidelines which protect students. Um, so there's a few different other components, um, but those are like the big ones is the education piece right now that's impacting a lot of students or cool. impacting a lot of schools. All right. Do you think this legislation will make a significant impact to stop sexual violence? I think the biggest thing with all the pieces of legislation that are out currently is that it's raising awareness. So sexual assault has always been a problem on campus, same with domestic violence, stalking, harassment. Um, one in five students are sexually assaulted um, during their time on campus. Most of the time that happens to females during the first six to eight weeks that they're in school. So that we have statistics from the 80s from that happening and there's probably more information that suggests that that happened even before official um, surveys were conducted. So I think that it's raising awareness, it's forcing universities to be introspective and kind of evaluate what the processes are, are they being helpful to students, and then it's also um, creating a system where schools can be proactive in teaching bystander intervention and really kind of getting people to look at best ways to intervene and looking at what is sexual assault and what is sexual violence. Um, a lot of students, believe it or not, don't really know that the situations that they're engaging in 
are technically defined as sexual assault or domestic violence. So it kind of creates and forces universities to raise awareness to the issue as well. Cool. Um, what changes or recommendations would you make for policy makers? So the biggest thing within the state of New Jersey right now is we're looking at evaluating TROs, which is a temporary restraining order. Mm -hmm. So how it works right now is victims of um, domestic violence or sexual assault can only get a temporary restraining order if there was some type of relationship between the students. So that can be anything from them going on a date to actually have been in some type of physical or dating relationship. So while some of those situations hold true, a lot of our stalking situations, a lot of our domestic violence situations don't necessarily involve somebody that was in a previous relationship with somebody. So even if they want to stay away from that person, um, the courts and the police have a really t hard time getting a temporary restraining order for those students if there's no dating relationship. So right now that's something that New Jersey's looking at changing um, and hopefully it kind of changes around the nation, which would be which would essentially be excellent because then victims can um, have a sense of protection as they're deciding whether or not they want to do a university of criminal process. Um, I think another big thing is, I believe it is Maryland, Virginia, and I think it's California, are looking at mandating um, that students that are expelled or suspended for sexual assault have an actual notation on their transcript. So they're creating some type of federal policy that I think eventually is going to mandate this, um, but obviously it would be great if New Jersey could be at the forefront of that. So essentially what that means is if you were going through any type of disciplinary process where you're separated from an institution, that'll be noted on your transcript. So if you were to transfer to another institution, they would know that you were accused and found responsible as a perpetrator for some type of Title IX violation. Where that's an issue now is we have um, lots of students enrolling in universities, colleges all over the country that essentially the university doesn't know any of their past experiences. So it'll say whether or not they were suspended or expelled, but it's up to that institution to determine why. And a majority of the time they, they, they don't um, look into that further. So you're bringing potential perpetrators and rapists back to a new campus where they could potentially victimize another student. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Jordan. You're welcome.